Okay, my name is Brian Martinez. I am the corporate HSD trainer, and today we're going to talk about forklifts. So first, let's talk about um, what we're going to cover today. Okay, we're going to talk about the fatalities that come with forklift operation, the types that we're going to use, uh, how the operate, how the forklift actually operates, and the hazards that are associated with the operation of the forklift, and how to use forklifts safely. So that's for us learning the right way to do it and the right way to use it. First of all, we want to make sure that we're we're, we understand that nobody under the age of 18 can drive a forklift, and that is an OSHA law, okay? And what that means is that we have to, everybody across the country that's under OSHA's jurisdiction has to follow that rule. Some of the things that happen with it, okay, is people get complacent and they ignore some safety aspect when it comes to this. Some of the things that will cause us to have issues is if you're not trained properly. So being trained properly is very important. That's why we go through this. We bring everybody in through Sunt. It's gonna be using this piece of equipment being not familiar with the piece of equipment, regardless if you've been trained on a forklift before, depending on what type of forklift, you could have different types of capacities, mechanical uh, sizes, and where the center of gravity is. So as we go through this, we gotta make sure that we understand what machine you have and where the center of gravities are, where the stability triangle sits with certain kinds. Uh, making sure we understand how to use the forklift in the correct manner, speed, those kind of things, and conditions, and then obviously certain parts being missing, adding parts, um, or being defective and that's really a contributing factor of how these things work. So as we look through the stats, okay, we have typically about 35,000 serious injuries every year, 62 non-serious injuries every year, and OSHA estimates that 11% of all forklifts are involved in an accident every year. So that's quite a bit for every year. Uh, if you think some of this stuff, the fatal accident types are crushed by, we talked about the, the struck by, the caught between, those kind of things. Um, really one of the biggest killers is going to be the tipping over. And so this is where I get into the operations of it and talk about what important it is to keep your seatbelt on. We'll go over that a little bit later too as well. But rolling over means people getting out or somehow falling out of the cab and getting rolled over on by the forklift and that's really one of the biggest costs. I mean, that's probably about half of the, half of the, it's 42% by the real numbers, but you think about it, half of the people that get killed in fatalities in forklifts because they get rolled over on. So we also have this thing called a PIT, which is a power industrial truck. And what that means is any kind of lifting um, device or some kind of a, uh, a material lifting device that is powered by some kind of an engine most often that we see, we're gonna have a combustion engine, which is a couple of things. One, you can do gas, you can do diesel, or you can do propane. And then there is obviously the battery power type that we have as well. Those are usually more of a smaller, maybe indoors warehouse type forklifts. Um, so we'll get into that too as well. But normally we get a carry, push, pull, lift, stock, or tier materials, is that's what we do. Another way of describing it is the use um, they include standard forklifts and special forklifts and industrial vehicles. They are all regulated by the Division of Occupational Safety and uh, Hazards. So let's talk about the list of the seven types of PIT. So let's talk about the first one, the class one electrical truck. It consists of an electric motor. Remember we talked about the combustible engine, but we're gonna start first with the electrical. It's got the counterweight in the rear, which is typical for every forklift. Uh, most of these tires are gonna be air filled, which is pneumatic. Some of them are solid for punctures. The operator usually sits and drives these pieces of equipment in a chair with a seatbelt and rollover protection. That's typically how it works, okay? The mass is considered the telescoping part that picks up the forks, which is a part of the lifting device. That's a major component, okay? Obviously, um, for the rest of the, for, for this particular type of forks, it's uh, gonna use a short four foot or a five foot fork in the front. They're not very big, usually for warehouse type stuff. So that's what makes the difference there. Okay. Very few of these forks, as we get into it, we'll see some other types of front loaded platforms where people can actually sit on it or stand, I'm sorry, excuse me, they can, people can actually stand on a platform being protected with a personal fall arrest system and then using it to pick materials. But we'll get into that in a second, okay? Class two electric truck. It's considered still electrical motor. It's narrower than the one we just saw, the class one because it fits through aisles and warehouses, those kind of things. They have solid tires, non-marking, those are for warehouse. Some of these forks on this type of equipment will go up and down and in and out and also side to side. There is some things called a class three hand truck. 
Okay, the hand truck is what we consider like a pallet jack. It does have handles with brakes, direct, uh, steering controls through that thing. So they're pretty limited in the, in the distance that they actually travel as far as up and down with material. Let's talk about the class four truck real quick, okay? This is very smooth tires, they're very limited in clearance, um, not very balanced very well to fit in between, you know, um, what we call uneven terrain, dirt, soft soil, rocks, those kind of things. They don't really function really well. They're not an all-terrain thing. So most of these are for indoor or a controlled slab surface. They just have to stay in a smooth area so they can travel very well. Usually these are LPGs, which is a petroleum gas, liquid, liquid petroleum gas, or it could be propane. They have some that are running on diesel and gas, but for the most part, because they are indoors, they are equipped with scrubbers. I was going to a class five truck and this one is typically a gasoline diesel. The wheels and tires are gonna be inflated with either foam, could be some air or a combination of solid fill and air. And when you look at this right here, the wheels are more aggressive. They have tread on them. They're thicker for an outdoor uh, scenario. And let's move into a class six industrial truck. And what this means is most of these will have a electronic component, but it will be mostly a, a combustion, internal combustion engine. Obviously the tires are gonna be the same. They're gonna be uh, solid or air filled or a combination of both. Um, most of these are uh, specialty vehicles. Let's try a class seven rough terrain RT forklift. We have different types of forklift with distant different attachments. They look a little bit different. The principle is always the same. We got larger pieces of equipment to pick up heavier stuff naturally. So if you look on the very right, um, there's a log yard truck, which got, has an attachment to pick up logs. Very similar to how you would use a larger piece of equipment like a loader or some sort. The rough terrain mast forklift, which goes up and down, does not reach anywhere, but it does have a larger size forks and larger type equipment to pick up larger things. The most common ones that we use in the construction site is um, our rough terrain reach fork. And this gives us an ability to reach high, reach far in front of us, but this does not go left and right. So you will not have an ability to move the load left and right. There are ship containers, which are similar to what we consider a reach fork. Pretty similar in, in uh, principle, except for the fact that they have a different attachment. They're built for this process so they can actually grab and move containers on the shipyard. Very similar to one of those controlled environment type equipments where you have smoother tires, maybe less clearance. Maybe they're very specialized for certain things and for this particular case is for picking up containers. So let's talk about some of the things that are not power lifts or power trucks, industrial power trucks. So first of all, we talked a little bit about the Bobcat, the skid steer. If you add forks to a skid steer, it doesn't make it a forklift, it's still considered a skid steer. Farm equipment or a pallet jack, those things are non-powered naturally. Um, the farm equipment is powered, but it's not considered a forklift. The backhoe with the bucket on the front, you can add forks, but it doesn't make it a forklift. So just consider that, understanding that whatever piece of equipment was made for initially, it's always gonna be what it's gonna be called some of the things we talk about too that are very important to safe use is how a forklift maneuvers, okay? How does it maneuver different from the vehicle you drive to work today, okay? There's a lot of things to consider when you're driving a forklift is you can't make maneuvers that you normally would with a regular vehicle. First of all, most forklifts turn with wheels to the back. The wheels in the back are usually your steering wheels. Uh, but some of the things also that are taken into consideration is visibility. Forklifts sometimes have a lot of uh, what we consider blind spots, spots you can't see because of the mass or because of things around you, because of maybe a load that you have. So those kind of things making the center of gravity when it comes to vehicles is very broad. And there's actually quite a big space under a vehicle that considers to be the center of gravity. With a forklift, it's very, what we consider more concentrated and it's very local to relations to the load that's outside of the base of the wheels. Not to mention some of the center of gravities may actually make a difference for height. So if a car is sitting low, most of the center of gravity is sitting on the bottom side of that chassis. Um, with the forklifts, sometimes with its higher profile, it's gonna have a little bit of different balance when it comes to that. The controls are different. The steering wheel may look the same as a 1936 Chevy, <laughs> but the plastic steering wheels that come in a forklift are similar to what we use in a vehicle. Um, they work the same way. You turn right, it goes right. You turn left, it goes left. All the same. There is other controls that 
you have to consider levers, um, typically just a brake and a gas like you would in a, in a, in a normal vehicle. To end it all, it's going to be more heavier than most vehicles anyways. And the reason is because they have a lot of counterweights.